Hello and welcome to the Special Moves Podcast. My name is Mike Williams and this is Jake Kukowski. It certainly is. Thank you very much, Mike. And Liam McKelvey. That's me. Hello, friends. How are you? Uh, right. Yeah, we're, we're very good. Um, As a collective again, I would love it when I do that. Yeah, me and Liam. <laughs> speaking on behalf of everyone on this side of the table. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we've got a lot to talk about this week. I say that, but to be honest, I, I'm not entirely sure what the topics are. And we've we yeah. had a look at Just a trust few me, of the, guys, few it's going to be great. Okay? It's going to be a strong it's podcast. Be a smooth ride. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got uh, plenty of emails as usual. Thanks for sending them in. If you've got uh, for next week, by the way, remember to email stuff into dearspecialmoves at gmail dot com. We'll have a readout of what you've got to say. Tell us your stories and stuff. That's the sort of mailbag bit of the podcast. Yeah, sorted. I'll yeah. tell you the email address again at the end if you missed that yeah. one. And Don't worry. Also, he'll remind you again that questions. <sighs> He wants yeah, stories. this is the thing. Yeah, stories, I, want, not I want emails, right? You don't have to ask a question every every, yeah. every time. Just send in whatever you want, you know, as, as long as it's uh, not words. unsolicited pictures or questions. You know, just a, send an pictures. anecdote. Send pictures if you want, but like, make sure they're relevant. <laughs> <laughs> On topic, <laughs> yeah. art. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got the new releases coming up. There's not a huge amount, but there is one. <laughs> Fucking big one that we're all looking forward to. Yeah, uh, that'll yeah. be at the end. But yeah. first, we're going to talk about some some shared world shooters, I guess, because that's what all video games are these days. Um, yeah. I mean, we uh, who's played who's played the division here? Liam, you're the only one who's played the division. Too. Yeah, the full version. Yeah. yeah, and I've I watched mean, it extensively. I watched I watched forty hours of the division, which is yeah. a full time job almost. This week it is, but that's yeah. the problem with the games, isn't it? They are full time <laughs> yeah. jobs. They want your they yeah. want all of your time, and that's that's why some of them are struggling mm-hmm. because. Yeah, you can't, so many hours yeah, a day. You can't give all your yeah. time to yeah. Anthem and Destiny and the Division, so something's gonna something's gonna yeah. lose out. Like, um, not to mention that there are free to play alternatives. There are games like Apex Legends and stuff that are, yeah. You know, it's I don't know what what they're expecting, but someone's gonna lose, aren't they? Um, yeah. So far, it's sort of looking like Anthem, I suppose. But if you had to, yeah, I'm wondering if there's still people who are into Division Two that are still checking in to do their dailies on Anthem. Maybe. I mean, is there, is there? This would be interesting to know. If anyone's watching or listening, could you please tell us if if all you play is shared world shooters and how do you manage it? If do you do you like cycle? Mm. between the like daily yeah, tasks? You got like a rover. Yeah, like right three to four. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be doing Destiny. You know, I'm on shift then. Yeah. Five to six, doing the Division Two, which is just yeah. Out. Because that's the thing. Yeah. Like maybe like yeah, your squad only turns up at one point, and then or maybe yeah. there's like a boss event on. Yeah, you, you must have to really rotate. Like, yeah, how oh, you doing, mate? You come out tonight? No, I've I've got three sets of daily tasks that I need to uh, complete on three different video games actually. So I, I can't. can't Someone it. out there, just you know, a little bit more close to home. Is anyone playing in tandem the Division Two and Anthem? That and would how be are you finding that? Yeah. yeah. Any if anyone is playing more than one shared world shooter at once, please tell us about it. Um Forbes has just done a an article this week, or it was just yesterday actually at the time of recording. Uh headline is this. Some disturbing math that's maths to uh, British people. Yeah. That shows why almost no anthem gear matters at all. Now this mm. is a big headline, seeing as that that gear and loot and items and equipment—that's what it's all about. After a certain point, isn't it? You're just trying to make the numbers yep. go up. Yeah. So if sure. that doesn't matter, that's a problem. <laughs> Liam, have you read this article? Have you seen this story? And are you so, disturbed by it? <laughs> I'm thoroughly disturbed by it. Uh, no, from what I gathered, it's a guy on Reddit uh, after Anthem's last patch. Yeah. He worked out how the scaling for items works, and apparently. After this patch, I think it was like 1.0.3. This patch that was meant to fix a lot of stuff. Not like, 1.0.3. I don't that know. hasn't betrayed us, has it? You, uh, you know that bug they had where the level 1 rifle was doing more damage than like the yeah. top end yeah. masterwork? Famously. Gear? Well, yeah, so that patch was meant to fix that, but apparently it's broke all the other loot. And a level 1 weapon is just as good as a level 30 weapon. When this came out, right, about the rifle, about the level one rifle, and they said it was a bug, I've immediately thought that that's a very strange bug. Like, I thought, surely that's like some sort of really like core system level problem mm. that's happened there. Because if, if, if you can just get like a level one rifle that seems like it's doing the same amount of damage as like a top end, yeah. like, what you, you know, what you're working up towards. I was very suspicious that it seemed like it was an ingrained problem in the system and it wasn't just sort of a bug. And then the fact that, you know, they've now tried to fix that and then it's had 
an effect on all the other stuff that means that basically the numbers, the big numbers that come popping out of the enemies mm-hmm. don't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, that's quite yeah. That's quite serious if it's true, isn't it? It's it's um I think the higher level your gear, it actually handicaps you more. So okay. because of the way the multiplier works and yeah. how they work out the average of like your power level, it's something like the better gear you have, so if you've got epic gear, it actually is worse for you, from what I understand. Right. <laughs> so if you go with like wearing common gear, yeah. you'll probably end up doing more damage. Is, Do what, know, is I, how I think I, it works. I think it's from what I know specifically if there's someone else higher level than you think. Yeah. So what I mean is like let's say I don't even know what the top level on Anthem is. Let's say thirty, yeah. Let's say you yeah. guys are level thirty and I'm level four. To ensure that we can all play together, they've got a sort of rubber banding kind of effect in there where my gear is going to be sort of evened out. Remember, like what Destiny did with the Crucible? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, not Iron Banner, but like the other one where it kind of like makes up for the numbers. It's doing that. Yeah. So, my level one gear has to. Compressing it. Yeah, of. exactly. Yeah. So, of course, if you're being compressed, if you're the bottom of that compression, the floor's only rising, so you're doing better. Yeah. But if you're the one at the top, you're getting squished down. And if you're the one at the top, you're the one that's worked hardest. So it feels like a little bit, uh. But yeah. I think if you're playing by yourself, like, and you've got level one gear against level 40s, it, I don't think it'll be as yeah. uh, effective. Whereas if you're, if you're rocking with, like, a high level and you're using your basic gear, it'll put that, yeah, compression, let's call it, or equalization into effect and, like, that's what it is, I think, yeah. that's sort of the issue. It, so you can see that it's come from um, them trying yeah. to ensure that everyone can play together and people aren't actually, I uh, guess, like, walled out, you know, by the, the you know, people that might not have time to check in every day and want to play with their friends, but it's kind of made the people that are checking in every day yeah. who notice it the most quite unhappy from um, what I'm reading. If you want to get it the proper, you know, if you want to know exactly what we're talking about, this is a post on Reddit on our Anthem the Game posted by the user Temper Hoof. You just have to sort of figure out how that's spelt based on what I'm saying. Um, it's it's yeah. a big post, though. It's quite difficult to miss. Yeah, I'd say um, I'll put the link in, but there's about a 50% chance I'll forget. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> just remind me in the comments and I'll find it. Apparently, you're better off leaving as many of your gear slots empty and then equipping a legendary weapon with a high power because it's more effective and completely decking out your javelin. Yeah, which is <laughs> so, uh, quite... Again, this yeah, is so, what the whole game is is about, isn't yeah. it? It's getting stuff. So don't equip epic gear. Hmm. Just equip one high-power weapon. Yeah. And apparently that results in better damage output. I mean, it's difficult for us to we talk about this mm. because none of us play it, really, do we? I mean, we've, we've, we've really played get, it. We really gave yeah. it a good go. But... I got to end game, but didn't actually get into it. Yeah, um, I... I, I played a little bit with Stu, our patron. I, I just, I've not been able to get into it since basically launch week, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's and and I, I so it's you know we're we're talking about this pretty much at this stage from the outside. Um, yeah. So because we're not currently checking in every day and, and and playing through, but it this is the kind of thing that seems on paper like a nightmare for someone who is checking in all the time. It's the kind of thing that you know Destiny. Definitely had its fair share yeah, of like sure. of bad stuff. Like I don't, I can't quite remember anything yeah. that's sort of this bad in terms of the court, like loot, you know. But I guess there was the cave. So in Destiny, the cave there was like this yeah, cave, in, cave in the original Destiny, Destiny one, yeah, yeah, where you everyone was just like queuing up outside the loot cave and shooting up all shooting up the mobs that were spawning. Out yeah, they because, were like infinitely spawning, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, because that was more like rewarding than just playing the game. Yeah, which you know that kind of problem is is. Can be a killer for this sort of game. So, but obviously, Destiny of uh, Bungie got on top of that, and they, mm-hmm. they just changed it. And you know, Destiny has a really strong following. So, Anthem, this isn't like the end of the world for for Anthem, no. but they they do have to get yeah. like get on this pretty yeah. quick. It, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. Uh, a Bioware community manager addressed it, said they're already aware of it, and they are working on a fix. Yeah, so, so, which is what you want to hear. Yeah. So again, they are listening. They are f- fixing problems. Yeah, but I can imagine it's probably a little bit more complicated than flicking a switch, which is why it seems balanced, that after the last isn't? one, yeah, well, it seems that they it's been made worse after they've tried to fix it. So they're obviously trying, um, but whether or not it's uh, a very straightforward process seems to be to be decided. I don't know if anyone who's playing Anthem has noticed it, or yeah. maybe they've noticed because I, I guess you're very much focused on yourself. You know, you're playing it's like a team game. You're focusing on your own damage output, aren't you? You're not like yeah. looking at your friends doing. 
damaging going, oh god, he's doing a bit more damage to me. I guess I it's difficult to figure out unless you unless you experiment. Yeah. Like this yeah. person has done and unless you sort of but then I guess if you did that, if you did sort of do what he's done there and say mm-hmm. strip all your, your gear yeah. off and just have like mm-hmm. you know a legendary weapon and fi- find out that you were slightly better off doing that then I can't I can't imagine anything more annoying for someone who's yeah, been, yeah, yeah. you know uh, feeling like satisfaction from picking up like great items of gear and stuff and yeah. kitting out the character in the best way possible yeah. optimizing and shit which is and then, the point of the game right which yeah. is the point of the game once again and then to find out that that doesn't mean shit you know is um, <laughs> yeah it's pretty annoying a bit, yeah. I it sort of cements for me as well that you you are best off leaving it a few months if you if you want to get into like these games and you you yeah. care a lot about um you know you care a lot about having a good time when you're playing this and you you don't necessarily worry so much about being part of the the bubble to begin with when everyone's sort of talking about it a little bit you don't you don't mind missing that mm-hmm. you probably are best off waiting a few months like to to. Yeah. play a shared world shooter because clearly in almost every example like yeah. the divisions just come out and there are performance issues with that and there are there are different things you know that is getting some decent uh, opinions and impressions and stuff but you know you still can't get a concrete review of the division yet because it's a shared world yeah. shooter so the reviews aren't they aren't able to review it yet mm-hmm. yeah so I you- saw a review thread and every review was in progress Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, so you can't. But then there are people reporting like um, serious, like performance issues and stuff with it. And uh, you know, what are you playing on? Liam? You playing I'm on? playing it on PC, and I haven't had performance issues, but it crashes a lot, like especially in the middle of missions. Yeah. But it's got a not too bad checkpoint system. And that's a full price game that yeah. you know you've got to pay a lot of money for. Uh, it's not a free to play game. It's not a no, you, you know it's a full no. sixty dollar product, yeah. forty fifty pound in the UK, and it's crashing every thirty minutes for you. So it's yeah. it's this is what I mean. So you, <laughs> between stuff like technical stuff like that, and then you know balance and and you know bugs and weird like system item progression things like this. Yeah, it does it does make me think like well why would you put yourself through that when you could just wait three months until everything's mm-hmm. like and get it cheaper most times yeah, much cheaper yeah. probably. Yeah, I mean, Star Wars Battlefront <laughs> Two is on sale on PS4 right now for mm. like eight quid. Yeah, that was sixty pounds when it came out, and mm-hmm. it's not that long ago, is it? It's about a year, or just over a year. Was it I guess? last like November or yeah. something? Like it that, was last so. November. Um, oh no, no, no! Sorry, yeah, like yeah, no, 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 it was the November it was before, before yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, whenever Last yeah. Jedi came out, because that came so, out yeah. the same fifteen months. Was that twenty? So it's over a year, isn't it? Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. So it's over a year, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, but. Because it was but it's eight, eight quid now. Yeah, Battle, <laughs> compared to Battlefield 60. Five is like in its slot. Battlefield Five it was a year before, wasn't it? Wasn't Not it? only is it eight quid now, it's now full of extra stuff for yeah. free as well. It's full of Clone Wars stuff and all this other bonus stuff you didn't have to begin with. So if you bought Battlefront Two now for eight pound, imagine you'd if probably have a much nicer time. Imagine if everybody did do that. Like they launched a game and it had like a hundred thousand sales on day one. Patient gamers, and then in like three months, patient gamers rise up, and then in three months' time, three million people buy it. Then yeah. you're like, what the hell? I guess yeah. it only gets to that point. Because they're scrambling to fix because it now. Because they want the sales. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they want people to, like, you know, people who are playing Anthem, they don't want to lose them. They don't want to lose the no. valuable uh-huh. players that have bought it day one and are playing it day one. So I guess they are the reason that it's pushing forward. But it's going to be interesting. I think it'll be quite interesting to see um, Ubisoft and EA both handling a shared world, world shooter at pretty much the same time and seeing which one has got the longest legs. Yeah. Which one out of the Division 2 and Anthem has the bigger player base a year from now. That's what I'm interested to see. I, because I think it can I put change. I on the division, really. Yeah, well, Ubisoft are pretty much known for flipping stuff around if it doesn't yeah. work. They did it with Siege yeah. and they did it with the original division. For Honor, like, they're good at that. They're good at adapting, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they've already got, this is a sequel, so they've already got a sort of entrenched yeah. um, you know, user base from the Division 1, yeah. which was still being played mm. so that people will move over f- from that and, and just keep playing. You know, they're into the yeah. system. You know, they like playing it. I think so. they've, got some, they've got a stupid amount of studios working on Division 2 as well. When you start up the game, the intro cutscene has... The logos are like five different development studios right, all sure. working on it at the same time. Yeah, gosh. So, you know, they're going to be obviously not in short supply of manpower to keep making no, new certainly. updates and stuff for it. Yeah. So that is the uh, the anthem story for the week, I guess, or shared world shooter yeah, story. The great shared world shooter race begins uh, now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, t- it's a tough one. I think it's, I think it's a... I, 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 don't know, I don't know if I'll go back to anthem, you know, yeah. currently. I'm, I'm not... F- 
I just I just don't feel the pull. You know, I don't I don't know what it's gonna have to do to, yeah. to if you've not been won over already, how do you win over because I think Destiny do sort of manage it with yeah. their expansions and stuff. I don't know, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Well it's uh, it's interesting that this is a discussion that happens now, isn't it? You know. Um we're talking about games what they're gonna become. Like yeah. like it's exactly. completely normal that like we've just you know, like I want to see where they both are in a year. Like you'd never say that. Like it's not. Yeah, about, it's not like, about where it is now, is it? It's yeah. about where where might it yeah. be? You know, which yeah. you're right. You're totally right. It's a strange, uh, strange thing. And is that a perfect opportunity to segue into an email? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, sure. Robert Tennant says, "Dear Special Moves, hope you all had a good weekend." Over the last couple of years, there have been a couple of gems I have purchased from the PlayStation Store, which have been in deep, deep sale. One of those games was Oxenfree, which I played yes, uh, at the end of last year. I absolutely loved it. It's It has easily put itself into my list of all-time favourite games nice. based on its story, gameplay, mechanics, its visual style, and its replayability. After I had finished it, it led me to feel a little embarrassed about how much I had paid for it. It cost me £3. I felt bad for the developer and wished I had paid full price for it. Because of this, I will be buying their new game, After Party, the day it comes out this year. Have you guys ever bought a game in a deep sale which made you feel which made you feel you should have paid full price for the experience? Thanks very much for taking the time to read my email. Have a good one. Robert Tennant. Cheers, Robert. Um, Where's he from? Yeah. Just have to imagine it's Tennant. Robert. Comma. Robert from Tennant. From Tennant. Okay. Um, okay. Robert, please email in to let us know where you're from. Yeah. Thanks, um, <laughs> yeah, I look forward to your response. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Oxen, Oxenfree for three quid, it feels like he's sort of almost mm-hmm. robbed the developers to a certain degree because he feels bad yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, paying yeah. so little for a game. I don't, I don't know if I've ever felt that. I always just selfishly feel like, yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> what that, a bargain. That's what I'm you like know? as well. Yeah. I never go, I'm always like, cannot believe it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Counting my so, blessings always yeah. me. Yeah. I d- so I don't know if I've felt guilt as, as such, but I probably have felt like, um, you know, this is worth more than this. I think yeah. uh, certain games that are cheap anyway tend to get that more out of me. Like when Hollow Knight is eleven quid on the Switch, I've paid for more for Switch games that are absolute shite in comparison to Hollow Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which feels a bit like you know. So I felt like not from a. I felt I feel like I've robbed them, or I feel like I haven't paid enough. I just think yeah, you know, it just seems cheap for what it is. I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, what about you guys? Have you had this before? Mm, yeah. Have you got anything off the top of your head? Uh, nothing I've ever felt guilty about, though. No. Like, I've denied the developers' funds or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. I did have a great deal where I got... This is a physical game, though. I got Metal Gear Solid HD Collection mm-hmm. for £5 That's from true. game, like, two months after it came out. Yeah. I think they put the wrong label on it, and the guy at the till honoured it. And I, was like, I think you've got her, haven't you? You've I pretty don't much know, got her. You but can't, you can't. I was like, this game isn't that old. Picked yeah. it up, went to the till, he scanned it through, Fiverr, and I was like, well, there you go. What? And I was like, out the store as quick as yeah. I could. Yeah, before you noticed. Yeah. yeah, I was like, let's go. That's a deal. That's but, a deal now. And you think, and I put like hundreds of hours into Peace yeah, Walker yeah. alone, never mind Metal Gear Solid 2 or yeah. 3. But oh. I, again, I didn't feel guilty that I, you know. No, I don't think it, like, it kind of, you know, not feeling guilty again can't express that enough don't feel guilty but uh, <laughs> David from Tennant has said that it's made him want to get after party it's Robert one. David. I, what David Tennant David. I'm thinking, aren't I <laughs> so David Tennant uh, thanks for writing in David big fan of Doctor Who really looking forward to Good Omens um, so I, what I am uh, doing more now is when I do get a game for a cheap price I associate that with a great bargain and, and it, it does actually make the game better it tastes it, sweeter this is what I was saying with so, Star Wars Battlefront earlier because if you pay 8 quid for it and you get the yeah. Star Wars Battlefront experience that you've got now mm-hmm. that feels like so much better a proposition the price yeah. is so important that people yeah. often overlook I think. so what it does to me is it has this knock on effect in my brain where I think it's a bargain and it makes me want to get their next game straight yeah. away, which of course won't, won't be at a discounted price. Mm-hmm. So like I, the two bargains that I've got recently, one of them I'm just assuming is a bargain because everyone keeps telling me about it. I picked up Titanfall 2 for about three quid. Yeah, I think yeah. it was two seventy nine, which is cheaper than a pint in most places in the UK. And then I got Sleeping Dogs for like literally £3 and it was well worth it for £3. Yeah. So if they pop out another game, I'll be there straight away waiting to buy. Not because I felt guilty, but because in my head I'm associating it with greatness. Like, oh yeah. my God, the value. I, th- I think after a certain you know. point, you know, they, they acknowledge that they wouldn't get the sale uh, without a discount. So they, they, mm-hmm. if yeah. you haven't bought Oxenfree at full price already, 
you know, this long after launch, yeah. you're not ever going to buy it. So that's what the, that's why they do it. You know, they, that that's yeah. they get they're just trying to get more people in. Like Jake says, they get the sale, which is good, but then also they get the sort of potential for you, the audience to come back. And this is basically exactly their dream scenario with you, Robert. Like you, because you want to buy their new game because it's literally Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, you love feeling, it. He's feeling guilty. He's feeling bad. He's feeling yeah. so good. He's feeling bad. Do you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> That's he's feeling so good, he's feeling bad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. no, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. like it's I'll, a bit I'll of a taboo that. subject. Yeah. Robert's like, I, love I that. shouldn't have enjoyed that. Well, Oxen Free is weird because they literally couldn't stop giving it out. It yeah. was on Humble Bundle. Yeah. Twitch Prime, it was a free yeah. game. Epic gave it away for free. Was it on PlayStation Plus at one point? Y- yeah, they just chucked it yeah. everywhere. So Humble I- Bundle, um, now that you mentioned that, I do, I, I've sort of felt a little bit in Humble Bundle where I've, you know, because they obviously they want you to spend, you can spend a quid and get like, Two or three games or something, um, and yeah. then they want you to obviously they want you to spend more. They want you to spend the average, you spend above the average. It's about donation as much as how much you you know want to buy for something, yeah. want to pay for something. So I guess Humble Bundle maybe a couple of times I probably yeah. felt maybe oh I don't know it's just it's like five pound thirty seven for like seven games that yeah. three of which are absolutely fucking worldies. Like you know you feel a little yeah. bit like have I ever told yeah. you about my famous Humble Bundle smasher? It's like the like. Have the, you got a famous smasher for every occasion? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can probably you, think of some. My yeah. famous <laughs> humble bundle smasher. No, no. Listen, listen to this, right? Because looking back, <laughs> you know, like listen to this. Humble bundle back in the day was like a lot of sort of small indies. Yeah. There wasn't stuff like that. There wasn't paywall stuff. Pay a minimal price. Yeah. And I remember in two thousand and it was either eleven or twelve. Mm-hmm. I got for. I do feel a bit guilty about this actually. Cool. One pence. Yeah. I know. That's the most Jake thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. I, in my defense, I was 18, so I was just an adult. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I worked like a, as a fucking glass collector in Weatherspoons, and I got, for a penny, Limbo, The Walking Dead, episode one. You should wa- already feel guilty. Episode one, <laughs> Super Meat Boy, The Binding of Isaac, yeah. and Braid, yeah. for a penny. And I think all of them now are probably in like if you went on any list like top indie games or whatever, yeah, they'd all be, be in the top yeah. fifty. You should feel bad for that. That's, that is that is robbery. Can, can I, you can basically I, did yeah. just is that the, is that a famous <laughs> is that worthy of a title? Famous humble bundle smash it. <laughs> it's well, the jury's yeah. out on that one, is it? Yeah, it feels more yeah smasher in the sense that it's a crime. Um, it, yeah, it was a bit. smash and grab. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, yeah humble bundles are pretty magic. Like when it you know when it all sort of falls into place. Yeah. Like, but how about that for a lineup? Like you, yeah, you know, crazy. I think the big, the best bargain, the flat out best bargain I've ever had. I have said this before, is um, I got all every single item of Grand Theft Auto software you can possibly get before <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for oh, five quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, on Steam, on Steam. Now Steam sales are good, but you know, about six years ago they were fucking unbelievable. And was this like they their New re- Year one, wasn't it? I it think. was. It, I don't know. It was, but yeah, they had. So they have the same yeah. sort of. They had the Christmas. They had a summer one or whatever. Um, and it was just four ninety nine yeah. for Grand Theft Auto one two three yeah. four and all the expansions for four and the spin offs of Grand Theft Auto like GTA London Unreal. or whatever mm-hmm. uh, it was just crazy and I couldn't you know um, you know Vice City they were, San Andreas. they were mega then weren't they I remember oh, yeah. getting yeah. Shogun two like a year after it came out for something silly like four pound or yeah. whatever mm-hmm. yeah and, and oh, uh, I remember getting the orange box for like two ninety nine on Steam so orange yeah. box yeah of course yeah, that's, that's, great. Valve great. that's another great that's another absolute greatest hit sort of eighty hours into Team Fortress two alone fuck yeah. so for two ninety nine yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so that, that's big can I just just to, you know make myself feel better it's not to clear my name it's just to make myself feel better I bought um the Walking Dead season one twice more oh. and the Binding of Isaac. Uh, I bought it twice, and I've put about two hundred hours okay. into it. Can I just? Can, do you know what I mean? Is that? Thank you very much. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah, great email, Robert. Thank you for that. Um, so, what were you going to segue into? Well, I was just talking about games like where they're going to be. You know. Okay. Are we roadmaps? Oh, oh, we is that what we we're talking about? No, I was. Oh, I talk... don't know. I not are, talk... are we not talking about No Man's Sky? Oh, one? I thought you were going to say no, the that's a game store roadmap thing. Oh, well, it could have gone either way. It's a split path. There's decision. too many fucking roadmaps. Fucking isn't it? choose your own adventure with me, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, okay. Um, well, No Man's Sky, because that's a game that is like different and it was at launch. Yeah. And it's a game that won people over or can at the start of okay. opportunity. So let's talk about No Man's Sky then. So No Man's Sky have announced a big, another, yet another big update. Yeah. Huge, big, big, huge update mm. called No Man's Sky Beyond. Beyond, uh, yeah. yeah. Which is basically MMO time. It's basically, it sort of <laughs> sounds like where. It makes sense. It's going to become a shared world shooter. Yeah. Yeah, with a roadmap. It's just, it just, 
it's. It, I mean, this feels like that's where it was going, right? That's where they were, you know, the foundation, yeah. and they introduced co-op, sort of a certain type of co-op, and then it improved on the co-op, and then this third person. And they've just been. It just feels like you know it has to beca- it has to come to some sort of zenith of like you know this is the ultimate Fucking point. Up. What else can yeah. you? What else could you do though beyond this? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Apart from No Man's Sky Two, yeah. Um, now and so they've basically gone yeah, yeah, um, yeah. pretty MMO ish with it. It's weird because the last two that they dated was I don't know how many people really remember them, <laughs> but they oh, was it called the Abyss and that was like the yeah. the watery. It really oh, yeah. did yeah. make a difference. And the other one was called Visions, I think, and that was no, literally uh, like clouds or something. Was it? Yeah, it was like right after. It was like a month after the Abyss, oh. and it was like it was just clouds, <laughs> uh, plants. No, wait, uh, I, was it the one with the ringed planets? What was that one? No, that was next. That was next. That was next. That was next. Oh, next. Yes. Yeah, they, 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 that's what I mean. So they did two of us, but no one really remembers them. It was okay. the Abyss. Everyone remembers that one. And it was like a month later. I'm about 99% sure it was Visions. And uh, yeah, so they were planning on releasing again three this year. Have a look yep. at Google. Um, three this year, but they've decided, no, this is what they've said, by the way, and publicly. They've said yeah. that they've bundled the three updates that they had planned into one summer release called Beyond and one of the three was this kind of MMO functionality so they still haven't talked about what the other two no. were going to be well it, it, I mean I'm saying MMO there's you know it's, it sounds you know well, it's I think, not I think they do say something about MMO though isn't well, they well they say you have radical <laughs> radical new online multiplayer experience or something like that radical. um so yeah as in the game's going to change Ra- what's yeah. the quote radical new social and multiplayer experience which empowers players everywhere in the universe to meet and play together. So that sounds pretty MMO-ish, but it doesn't yeah. sound like that doesn't mean it is now an MMO. It just it just sounds. Could just have twenty people in the same instance or whatever. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a crafty sort of matchmaking almost system where you've got yeah. co-op now, but it sounds like if you, you like you said, you know, if you, it'll probably be a case of who's in which galaxy at once, and mm-hmm. it'll just sort of make it so that yeah. you, there'll be like like you said 20 odd per could do it like journey there. where you just have people appearing over yeah. the horizon yeah. which is what you want you want it to feel i think the less menus and um you know stuff that takes you out with the game the better in it so i think i think yeah. the more natural and more journey-ish they can make it feel that the better really it's, you know especially if you're not co-oping with your mates if you're just bumping into people mm-hmm. you don't want them to have like their fucking names on top of their heads mm-hmm. and that floating you know, yeah. saying like yeah you know i've just looked at what the no one's scrapping was it was visions and it Great. added well, it, it added loads of cool stuff it added archaeology where you can find oh yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. sentient uh wild uh, sentient like minerals like yeah. the rocks and then the cool feature that i saw was like meteor showers but they like land on the planet so like there was like crystals that would just land and you could like harvest them and they added rainbows That's as nice. well yeah so cool. yeah uh it, it, do you know what yeah no man's sky is one of them games that like Right now, I looked at those pictures. I'm so fired up to play it, right? And then I have to install it. I've got it on disc, but I've got to install the update. About 78 gig. So that's an overnighter. And then I wake up the next day, I play it. I start again every time because I want to relive yeah, it. Yeah, me too, to be honest. Every time I start yeah. again, I forget just how much they add like crafting stuff to the game. There's loads of it now. It's like a bit borderline rust. Yeah. There's so much crafting. It's like Minecraft for the first literally five hours as well. It's not like a short 30-minute tutorial, is it? To get in a... The Galactic, wait, what's the, no, it's just solar system? What do you call it? Like, not interplanetary, but jumping from solar system to solar system to make that first jump with your warp cell that takes like between five and ten hours, mm. depending on what uh, interstellar, I guess. That interstellar, that's, yeah, yeah. that's it, yeah, thank you. So, the solar system that you're on depends on how long the beginning yeah. bit takes, but then when you finally do that, normally that, that, that little itch I had has been scratched, so I don't really yeah. get to have fun, and you don't get to experience the full like change of the. Whatever they've added in, you don't yeah. quite get to fully sort of. Yeah, I know you. I definitely know what you mean. I I get that as well. I get like an overwhelming feeling to. It's like the same when I play Skyrim or something like that. If I go back to a big RPG like that, Divinity, anything, I just want The Witcher. I just can't come in like twelve hours in. And no, go, what was I yeah. doing? I'll just fucking start again, innit? And then, <laughs> the start pretty... again, and then it's like you don't do any of the stuff that you remember because you just busy yeah. looking the witcher finding frying pans and all this and that yeah. so there's a and, and obviously these epic gate you know literally epic games I have to spend a lot of time establishing a big story and stuff so yeah but i feel like no man's sky is a game that going back to that email we just read out from robert that like pe- people are paying like 15 quid for that now 
they're getting a deal. Like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I know it's not for everybody, and especially because uh, again, there's this real focus on crafting, which has snuck yeah. itself in. Um, but the game is worth more than fifteen pounds. That, that's definitely, I'm, I'm definitely with you there. Like you've said this before, and I, I totally agree. That's the one area where they've, you know, there was there was huge like demands and complaints and stuff when the game came out. Like, oh, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. And they've and they've they definitely have gone down the very video gamey sort of. There you go then. There's loads of shit to get on with, you know, and yeah. and that's sort of the 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 one sort of morsel of of beauty that was in No Man's Sky when it launched was just the you do just go anywhere. It doesn't really, you know, all you're doing is scanning stuff and landing places, and yeah. there's like this innocent sort of belief from the, the developers, I guess, to begin with, that people would get enough out of that. But then yeah. there was so many, there was such an uproar about the like lack of content or whatever. They went. Well, here's all the fucking content you could want, boys, and it's just like yeah. pouring all the crafting yeah. and buying a bit of this. Yeah, and for hours. I, I, yeah, uh, so I th- I think that's <laughs> you know that that's just the reflection of what yeah. people seem to want, I suppose, in video games these days. Now, look, we've, look we, this is half an hour of podcast, and how much of that time have we been talking about loot and items and you know gear and shit like that? And, it's and true, that's, man. That's what people want, I suppose, isn't it? But yeah. um, it would be nice if there was maybe a just don't worry about it mode. Where I don't I know think if there's there a creation is, mode. There is a creative mode now and you don't and you can you start off with a ship and you go in anywhere you want, yeah? yeah. So there is that mode now, but I, I always like the kind of the struggle at the beginning of yeah, the game me too. And stuff. The, the... But it just ends up a bit of tedium now. Though when you do get to these planets now they are a lot more impressive. Yeah. Especially like with visions and, and the the abyss, like it makes it's yeah. like a different game. It but basically is no man's sky two at this point. That's what it was missing for me at launch, is just just a lack of variety in, mm. in that diversity of biomes everything. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and 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 just you know, you you'd find one ruin the first time. I was like, oh wow, ruins. That's really interesting. But then the same ruins are everywhere on every planet yeah. you go to, and then the same outposts are everywhere on every planet. But now that they've changed, they've tweaked the stuff that was already there as well. So the yeah, you know, the output, the outposts and stuff of vastly less frequent but sometimes you'll get on one planet that is you know quite busy and it's quite you know it gives you the sense that it's more settled and occupied and there's a lot more outposts and stuff so there's just that flavor to each planet now which it was that's what it was really missing to begin to begin with for me and they've definitely i wonder um, how much more we can expect though because you know this is now gotta be the end doesn't it surely this one beyond surely it's got to be the last one and just support after this i suppose i'll probably have a few i'll be surprised if they keep adding well, if it's an online game, you've got to, haven't you? you if you're yeah, going to have social yeah. stuff, you've got to have a few mm. people. Yeah, true. You know, maintaining it. You know, uh, maybe chucking in some seasonal stuff or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I don't yeah. know. That's probably a horrendous idea for No Man's Sky. But, um, all right then. Uh, should we should we segue straight on to the other roadmap, or should we do another email? Um, What's your fancy, lads? What do you What do you want to do? Email it is then. All right, dear, dear special moves. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. This is from Jonathan. From Ackworth in Georgia. Nice one. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, Jonathan says... Georgia, the the state state or the country, by the way. Ackworth doesn't sound very Georgia, the country. Georgia, USA, yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, all right, fair enough, yeah. Just want to make sure. So, uh, uh, Jonathan sent a long email agreeing with Liam. Um, but I'm not going to read any of that out. I'm just going to read this bit. Okay. I do okay. disagree with something Liam mentioned <laughs> <laughs> yeah. regarding Final Fantasy VII. Liam gets no props. Yeah. <laughs> Liam gets no props. <laughs> All right, then. There was plen- don't worry, Liam. There's plenty of paragraphs of agreement, but this is the actual topic yeah. that he's raising. Yeah, I do- you can read that on your own yeah. time. <laughs> I do disagree with something Liam mentioned regarding Final Fantasy VII Remake. He mentioned that they have to make it episodic to faithfully recreate the game. Square Enix words, not Liam's. And I have to say, this feels like a lie. Um, I'm just assuming that's how he wrote it. With games like Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, and even Square, uh, and even Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they all show a huge game can fit onto a single disc or require a large download install or come in a single play, uh, single package. I think Square Enix has broken up this game because they know people want it and are willing to pay for it. I, hear, I fear Final Fantasy VII Remake will be tainted through this episodic flow like Deus Ex or almost any other game that has been brought down by this model. Hope you all continue to do what you do. I've, I always get excited when I see you've uploaded a new video, even if it's about a game I'm not interested in. Sorry this was really long. Don't worry about that, Jonathan. I sorted it out. Um, but yeah, by cutting out all yeah. the, the pro Liam propaganda. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I don't know about this. I, I feel like Final mm. Fantasy. It's the, those get remember Final Fantasy games came out on multiple discs yes. back in the day because yeah. there was 
a lot of scenes, a scenery, lot of motion video. a lot of full motion video. There was a lot of, they were long games. They were, you know, there was plenty of stuff in there. I can see Final Fantasy VII Remake, like, being a 100 gig game, like, fucking... Final Fantasy XV is already yeah, 100 yeah. plus. Yeah, more, more, more than that. Yeah. You've got the DLC and stuff. If, if they, even if they, but even if they were very yeah. clever with how they did it, and they were, they were like, yeah, there's, no, there's no way it can fit on one. I don't think. I think Liam was right originally. Like, to, well, by Liam, Liam was just saying what Square Enix. Yeah, I was said. just quoting what they were um, about. But you know, like, so he's not even disagreeing with you there, Liam. He's disagreeing no, no, with Square no. Enix, isn't he? Now it's the, you know, I, this is what something that they said originally, but they've. Haven't they reset production of this because they weren't yeah. happy? They were working with another studio and took it back <laughs> off them after they weren't happy with the quality yeah. and right. length of time that was spent on and it. And this okay. is it was at that time with the first company, let's say, that the episodic discussion had come out. I don't know if they've followed that up again or mentioned that again, but mm-hmm. as far as I know, that's not a hundred percent cemented in. Um mm-hmm. but I mean uh Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan um, has just do what you normally do and just say David. Just say David, yeah, Stephen. Everyone's a Stephen. <laughs> yeah. um, I think when you talk about Red Dead and stuff like that, yeah, it's, the map's big, but it's not Final Fantasy VII big. I think you just need to like remember if you've played it just how actually big the game is. Midgar is massive, right? Junyon's massive. Think about that, Cosmo Canyon, Calm. And, and if you think about what they were Golden back Source. then. Golden Source, massive. So many places. It's a recreate what they had in a very sort of flat, um, you know, yep. drawing, basically, as a, as a, you know, bit of proper what yeah. you'd expect from an open mm-hmm. sort of 3D area. These days yeah. is a lot of work. Honestly, if, if they keep the map to the same scale... Get into like you know the Condor Tower and all that, the North yeah. Crater. There's no way on earth they could fit it into like an instance like God of War where it all loads at once. There is no way. Midgar is like the size of the map of God of War. Mm. It probably bigger. You know, Red Dead Redemption. If they're doing a full city and Midgar was chapter one or something like that, you know, Temple of the Ancients. I'm just like literally naming places. And if you haven't played the game, it means nothing to you. But if you've played it and you just really remember, like the bit where you march through Junion, the bit where you're on Sister Ray, the bit when you do the parade, it's too big to, to do it. It's about what? Five times, 10 times the size of the Red Dead map. It's massive. That mm. game, all of the places have multiple instances, caves, systems like that. And like, I, I don't know if I would enjoy it as much episodic. I, I mean, I'd love it if it was like five Blu-rays. That would be like sweet as hell, man. Like if you had to change discs, it would be a nice little retro a big feel. Jewel yeah. case again. You know, if you oh, get that, you get amazing. that nostalgia. You know, of um, change disc. I, I'd actually be in favour for that, and I think a lot of people who'd be nostalgic for it would actually yeah. enjoy that as but well. Then, but then, how do you? How much do you charge for that? Isn't it? That's the yeah. problem. Yeah, and that, that is the thing. I think if they could just about ninety quid, probably wouldn't it? Like, and I think that's a fair ask if the game's going to be as big as. It needs to be to be yeah. faithful, and I know that sounds ridiculous, and it might be very, very skewed by my like monumental bias towards the game. I think it's probably it's in the top three games ever made. I think it would perversely be like a source of buzz if they were like Final Fantasy VII is on three discs. There's a bonus disc with some other shit on it. Yeah, um, I'm making off and dock. it's ninety quid. I feel it, like yeah, they would it, perversely like, get like if they made you know, the map. Like they didn't cut corners out, or they didn't like condense it. Like Final Fantasy Fifteen map is small compared to the world map of Final Fantasy Seven. If you think about how long it would take you to walk from one side of the map to the other, yeah. it would take ages. Mm. So you know, like Costa del Sol in Final Fantasy Seven. Think about the size of that, and think about in Final Fantasy Fifteen. Is it called Costa del Sol now as well? It's, um, it's like one beach hut with a cat in it, isn't it? I think Golden Key. It's called Golden Key. Golden you know what Key. I mean, though. Yeah. How small that is, like compared got to Lostalum City. I th- is it Lostalum? I think yeah. it is. Which is like the big main city in the game. Mm. Yeah. But even then, that's not like Midgar size. Exactly. So I, I just, I think that yeah, even though games have been done big in the past, to faithfully recreate it, it has to be multiple discs. Yeah. It's obnoxious to ask for a two hundred and fifty gig download. I don't think people would do it. A quarter of your hard drive gone. Yeah, I think my whole hard drive is <laughs> well, a big fat old, old school PS4. Yeah, yeah. This, 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 this really annoys me that when I put a disc in and I'm like, right, this, I can play something in 20 yeah. minutes and it's like, now downloading a fucking 46 gigabyte, gigabyte update. Or something. Yeah, just... downloaded the Modern Warfare remastered on PlayStation yeah. Plus the other day and the whole thing's like just under 80 gig. Yeah. Yeah. Flipping heck. I like, mean, that was a 360 game. That's one game. hell of a remaster, isn't it? It's, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's. It, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think that's that, that it is a limitation, you know, of technical limitation, and and. Yeah. I don't. I don't think episodic stuff is that successful, r- really. So they wouldn't. I don't know why it would be appealing to them as a business decision. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I don't think if they could just yeah. sell it as one game, why they would go no, yeah. let's mm-hmm. break it up. And, and it's not like it's been yeah. massively successful, or lucrative for other people, is it? No, absolutely. They would sell a season pass for it, like they did with Hitman when they did that episodic. Like you could buy it a season pass. So it's not. I, I don't think that they'd be lying, and I don't think that they'd be lying to get more money. Yeah. Um, maybe to justify the price point, but not 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 lying. I'm just saying, episodic they could probably charge what twenty five pound a pop for five episodes, yeah. and that way because because they know well. I'm assuming that the uh, Stephen thinks that you can't just whack out the gate a hundred quid. Dave, that's it. Sorry, yeah, Robert says so that you can't a hundred quid. But yeah. I think that this is this could change gaming prices. I think if they can, sell if it, it well, yeah, anything is successful. Will you know free to play stuff? Yeah, like, just few so even if it was stories. episodic, how long are the episodes? Be? Well, they'd be thirty hours, yeah. ten hours. You, you don't know. Yeah, if they were full Fa- price game, exactly. Yeah, because Final Fantasy VII is like a sixty-hour RPG on the PS One, mm. and that's if you don't dawdle. It took me about two hundred hours to finish that fucker. Yeah, spent yeah. hours about spent about six hours in a golden saucer on that fucking meat like game where you have to get that nut for that oh, fucking yeah. little <laughs> noodle <laughs> like the cocoa nut. Yeah, 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 remember that game? Solid, mate. Thank you, Jonathan yeah. from Ackworth, uh, for your email there. Um, should we do what was the other one? The Epic Store thing. Are we gonna, do you fancy talking about that or? I was just what. Well, I don't even know what the roadmap was. I just thought it was funny because you said everything as a roadmap last podcast, and then I said, "Have you seen it? Epic Store's got a roadmap." It was like a roll well, of features, wasn't it? I think yeah. the, the, if we're going to talk about Epic Games Store thing, we have to talk about the uh, the data privacy scandal. Oh yeah, scandal, controversy, all those oh, words that YouTube yeah. loves. Yeah, go on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the murder. Let's, let's calmly dismantle this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's so, hot property that. that so the Epic Games Store um, I, I guess it was sort of doing some creepy stuff I guess is the best way of, of putting it in yeah. a, in a, it was in a creeping way. on your computer files yeah because okay so so if you're a PC gamer if you're completely unaware if you're a PC gamer you got a lot of your games are on Steam the Steam sort yeah. of platform and then recently the Epic Games Store has been the the hot up and comer which has been getting a lot of exclusives and stuff and, and there's a lot of games that are launching on Epic's store and they're getting people over from you know originally with with Fortnite I guess but then there are other games now Hades which you've been playing a lot of <sighs> yeah that's amazing. on Epic amazing yeah, amazing it's on the amazing. Epic store isn't it so you yep. so they they you know they are they are making a dent um, and there are and Valve are losing stuff yeah, you know they yeah, lost it, Metro mm-hmm. Exodus yeah which was on Steam people could pre-order Metro Exodus on Steam they had done and then really late on it was it a moment out, of weeks like it was four weeks before yeah, something like that. really late on it turns out that it's Metro Exodus yeah. is now an Epic Games Store exclusive which you know so, and that's big that's a big loss you know Metro's yeah. a big PC IP like yeah. PC games love a bit of Metro so that's big news so what's happening more recently is that the Epic Launcher is that what it's called yeah the Epic Launcher has been having a bit <clears> of a <throat> perv on your on your yeah. Steam stuff, uh, which it's not supposed to be doing. Yeah, go on. Um, do you guys know any anything about this? I know yeah. a little bit. I know it was peeking at you know, like your Steam friends list and stuff like that. Yeah, because of a file that was on there. It read didn't it read a file from Steam's API yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was like Steam makes a condensed file containing all your like relevant data and stuff in it. Yeah, so this and was... keeps it locally on your computer. Right, and this was um, as with everything uncovered with a post on Reddit. Um, uh, yeah. Someone had sort of. Uh, spotted or uncovered this yeah. uh, stuff going on and posted on Reddit. I always wonder how they find these things, but you know, the, I, it's yeah. probably like a network engineer who just fancied having a look at how the Epic Games store yeah, works yeah. and stumbled across it. So the post was, um, you know, dramatically titled "Epic Games Store Spyware Tracking and You." <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, yeah. is uh, yeah. you know, I'd buy that book in an airport. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. quite nice. <laughs> Uh, so this was posted by Redditor, um, God almighty, how do I say that? Not M. Portant. Not important. Uh, yeah. Accused Epic <laughs> of running, this is from Eurogamer, accused Epic of running processes and making attempts to access DLLs and root certificates without letting the user know. Um, so Epic Games has been 
just seeing what you've been up to in in sort of I don't know how to put it in the most sort of relatable way because it's this sort of stuff can be really inaccessible and and it could easily it makes me like glaze over a lot of the time when I, I read stuff like this mm. if I just don't know what the words are I'm just like <laughs> no, right yeah, yeah, no, who cares sure. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it, it is it is quite significant this it's just a bit of software sort of shenanigans that you that they shouldn't be doing and then so Valve. Um, yeah. As you know, the, the, these are companies that are making statements against, against each other now. Valve says um, that it doesn't want Epic or anyone messing with Steam user data in, in response to this, which is a fair thing to say. You know, mm-hmm. if, if Valve have got, you know, yeah, yeah, they uh, owe it to their users to protect their data. Yeah, um, which is a huge worldwide sticking point as of the internet lately. Like GDPR is being taken super seriously. Obviously, yeah, yeah. like. You know, you have to comply yeah. as, as a company, or you will get. Well, the company will get badly liquidated. Get you, you'll get done in, man. So um, Epic has actually confirmed that this is happening. Uh, yeah. So they've, they've um, admitted that it makes an encrypted local copy of your local config um, .vdf file yeah. from for Steam, and so they've they've openly said that. that yeah. So, Epic, it, so it's weird that it goes into Steam's files and copies one of them for its own means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they said information from this file this is a quote from Epic information from this file is only sent to Epic if you choose to import your Steam friends and then only hashed IDs of your friends are sent and no other information from the file but you know the the file still exists and they've still still sort of made a copy of it to to do that so quite aggressive like business moves as well like just like giving you the you know going going into this into their rival you know platform uh, files files under the hood yeah in order to to pull out information to make their users on their platforms experience better which is like really yeah. you know quite aggressive hi sort of do stuff. you want to get all your friends from steam over here Hit, press this button and we'll do all the heavy lifting for you yeah um so yeah. so steam of you know steam of uh, valve sorry has, has replied just as you you know, you'd expect we are looking into what information the Epic Launcher collects from Steam. Um, this is private user data stored on the user's home machine and is not intended to be used by other programs or uploaded to any third-party service. Um, so, so they they are you know it's quite a firm sort of response from from Valve and Steam mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, um, I, th- I, th- I couldn't have foreseen Epic being when Fortnite was like romping. I couldn't f- have foreseen Epic being this bigger player in this sort of stuff <laughs> yeah uh, no you know. for sure they've been making some moves lately and they've been making billions so yeah um i guess yeah now they've finally got the opportunity to make a i guess i'd see it as an alternative or valve would see it as a competitor to yeah. the store but this could be a big issue because the bigger the company the bigger the potential lawsuit and if they are found yeah. to be doing mm-hmm. something wrong um let's say your competition your rival has done you dirty, done something wrong, and you've got an opportunity to sue them into the mm. ground. Do you think Valve is going to just let Epic get away with it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because not only that, but Epic are also actively kind of trying to become the, you know, not the uh, the and, but the or to yeah. Steam, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, if Epic have, if, have really slipped up here, I don't think Valve will let it slide. Like, it'll be, yeah. this will be ongoing it's, over it's months. It's really difficult to, to break because because Steam, Valve has got such a, like an entrenched audience at this point. Yeah. Everyone who plays games on PCs has got at least, at least 100 games on there. Yeah. If you've ever, if you've <laughs> yeah, been, yeah, it's if not even you, hyperbole that, it's is not, it? It's if you, not, no, it's, it's not. If you've, if you've been playing games on PC for longer than two years, You've definitely got more than a hundred games on on your Steam account because they're so cheap yeah. and they're keys. You're getting all over the place. You get humble, humble bundles. bundles. And you get six, seven games at a time. So people have got, people have got loads of games registered to their Steam account. So it's really difficult to to like crack that open. Obviously, they need competitors. I mean, stuff that EA has done with Origin has has led to improvements in Steam with like you know the refund policies and shit yeah. like that. And yeah, um, so this kind of stuff. The big thing that Epic is doing that we haven't mentioned is that. They offer a better share of the um, income from mm-hmm. re- you know revenue. Yeah, is it eighty-eight, twelve percent split? I don't know. I think it's, so. it's better than Valve, um, which is thirty yeah. percent, right? Valve takes yeah. thirty, right? So, so if they're giving twelve, um, if they're taking twelve mm-hmm. rather than thirty percent, that's huge. That's a lot that's of a big money, margin, per, yeah. you know, especially if you're selling mul- like you know millions of copies. Yeah, any successful indie game sells a hundred thousand copies. That's yeah. a, that's a that's lot a of money big for chunk them. of revenue. Yeah, and then the, that percentage is you know that percentage difference split with the platform is is huge. So. Mm-hmm. You know they they really are trying to pull people over, and it's obviously working because game 
because they're caught in developers and developers <clears> are happy to go over because yep. they get a bigger see, cut of the revenue. There's like so. two or three games this week that announced they'll be Epic exclusive for a bit. Yeah, it, yeah, timed exclusives. Yeah. That's certainly a thing that's happening like, like a lot. Usually around the year, is it? They have exclusive time on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the situation with Epic and Valve. Steam. I'm seeing yeah. what what they've actually got. Uh, you're doing that now. Exclusive. I know. I just went to see what they've got exclusively, and it seems like uh, Ashen, Hades, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, uh, the PC version of Journey, Hello Neighbor, Hide and Seek, um, and uh, yeah, and then they oh, and then they obviously they give out a free game every two weeks. That's kind of their big thing. Yeah. And they gave out Subnautica uh, around Christmas, Huge, and then Super Meat really Boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's obviously. Uh, I mean, I've got the Epic Launcher. And I know a lot of people... I remember when the Metro thing was coming up, there was people that were sort of saying, I would love to get Metro, but I'm not getting the Epic Launcher for yeah. this mm-hmm. reason or this reason. Because, well, well, it's because they had no refund policy. They had this, this, this. But now they've launched a roadmap. Have you got the roadmap there? Do you want me to quickly have a go? No, I wasn't going to talk about the roadmap. I was actually bored of talking about Oh, okay. Oh, you were bored, were you? No, okay, let's, <laughs> let's read an email instead. Well, there, there was a roadmap, but it was literally just stuff like the condensed version is yeah. they're going to be adding a wish list soon, guys. They're going to be adding cloud saves. Uh, cloud saves are going to be adding a better review policy, but it is User actually reviews. pretty boring. So, Do you want to re- read an email? Uh, I was actually going to do the new releases, but we could do one more re- email if you want. Uh, if you've got one lined up, but if not, ask yeah, Well, we haven't really. We got one from last week, which is I didn't read last week because it was such obvious uh, mic bait because it's about <laughs> rugby games. I was like, I'm not going to read that because that's obviously someone going, I know what this is. Why don't you read, read it, but just, just don't give him what he wants? Which you is read what? it. A response. No, no, go on. So do- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just read it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the Espresso moves. Yeah. With the Welsh rugby team currently on course for a stunning Grand Slam, <laughs> which did happen, by the way. So this is, like I said, this email's a week old at this point. Uh, when conversations between my group of friends turn towards the oval shaped ball and what is the best video game representation, the one that still stands head and shoulders above all the others is 1997's Jonah Lomi Rugby. 22 years ago, in brackets, helpfully. Whilst it was a more, more uh, arcadey approach to rugby, it offered tight and responsive controls and fast gameplay. It's been the closest game to capture the spirit of the sport. Since then, EA has had a crack at it, but my research. But by my research, the last one they released was in 2007, and other than the odd cash-in on the Rugby World Cups, the games released since are average at best and very buggy. Why do you think we don't have a big budget annual iteration of a rugby game like FIFA or Madden? The game is popular in Europe, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, to name a few, and I know from experience working in games retail that rugby games are often requested. Is it because the sport is not a huge in America that we don't get one? Or is it that the game itself, uh, with its different facets of play, are difficult to recreate? And do rugby league games fare any better? Uh, keep up the good work. Come around, Biff. Dave, half South Wales, half North Wales, lives in Cardiff. That's excellent attention to detail when it comes to telling us where you're from. Yeah, Thank you, exactly. Dave yeah. Brown. Yeah, he's got his origin yeah. story, and he's also got his current whereabouts. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, one, nice, Dave. nice one, David. That's a good email. Cheers, mate. Um, so, uh, yeah, they are. They are. If you. Um, if, I guess you don't know or care if you don't know, but there are just no good rugby games. There's just there's a few. Yeah. There's a couple of rug, recent ones that are called like jo- in, incidentally Jonah Lomu's Rugby Challenge. Who is Jonah Lomu, by the way? He he's, was he like a big player back then? Yeah, he's uh, rest in peace at this point. But he was oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But he was he basically made the game professional because he was like the game was an amateur sport. Mm. Then this guy comes along, he's an absolute fucking beast. He's huge and really fast and just like walking over other players. Yeah. Um, and he would just score like the most ridiculous tries because he was so big and athletic, yeah. and they were like sh- and really good, and they were like shit. <laughs> so he, and he helped he helped take the game professional basically, which is a big moment for any sport uh, if you're an amateur sport to go professional. So he's largely credited with that sort of uh, transition. So anyway, there aren't any good rugby games yeah. because it, I reckon it's just because it's so hard to 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 uh, make a game out of. I think you know where do you put a camera to. Where do you put like football is really easy because people are so used to watching it from the broadcast point of view. But if you watch a game of rugby, the camera it does have the broadcast like yeah. panning left to right. But then it goes everywhere. Like when there's a scrum, it's right on top of the scrum, and it's and the camera moves around. All, so there's not like yeah. it's a bit like NFL in that sense where the, you've got multiple camera positions, and then the game is so complex that it's so difficult to program good. AI behavior for yeah yeah because you yeah, yeah. you've got fifty you've got thirty players who have all got different jobs and it's and it really is not like NFL where a lot of their jobs is just to hit the other person in front of them to make space 
it's it's more like what they're doing off the ball to get into space and stuff, and it's yeah. a very complicated game. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that, that bottom line. I think there's enough people who want to play it. Like you said, people keep asking for it, but probably games, not. It's too difficult. Yeah, like not even if every rugby fan in the world, but well, not every if it, world. it does, if, if it had an NFL size audience, then yeah, maybe. that's what I mean. Yeah, it's it has it'd have to do really well in a rugby community to even be like break even yeah. do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like, NFL is probably as complicated but it's, there is enough money in it to warrant it isn't it yeah, yeah for sure uh, but even then there's loads of debate about like Madden games not being the proper the real deal sort of thing and yeah whatever. so yeah that's the truth of it David thanks for your email um, it's nice you get to talk about something you like in podcasts yeah so games, fucking games all the time jeez <laughs> Um, nice. It's good that. What? It felt nice to say when you talk about something that you like, but it's not a game. It's just good, isn't yeah, it? Because I, fans I famously home. hate games, isn't it? That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> right. So what have we got? Co- this is a game. <laughs> this is the one now, yeah. isn't it? Uh, is before it. we do this, this though, year, man. please remember if you want to send in your uh, emails, rugby or not, it's dearspecialmoves at gmail dot com. Send them in. Send stories. Send opinions. Send little things that we don't think about if we've been talking about. You know, the epic launcher and Anthem and all this, and we didn't cover yeah. stuff that you thought we should cover. Let us know. Tell us what you think about it, and then we'll uh, read it out next week. So, new releases then before we go. There's a few games out this week, but none more significant than Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is out on March the 22nd, which is the Friday. Friday. Uh, it is out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Enough That's on it. Steam. Isn't it? That right. is on Steam. Yeah, it? enough said. But if there needs to be more said about it, we're well, getting a new tent, you lads. Fucking come on. By way of Dark Souls, which is pretty nice. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is perfect. You know what? It's nice. Um, you know, those that have been listening to like the podcasts for a while, and those that listen to the Pretty Good Gaming podcast, I bring tent up all the time. This is like Liam getting another dino crisis. It's true. It's like I'm always fucking yammering on about this, and then to see all the fucking the latest impressions videos and stuff like that, people keep saying Tenchu. The new trailer that they put out has got like the same shot as Wrath of Heaven, like um, oh, right. Sekiro's on top of a dojo with the full moon. Ah, oh, it's like the exact same. It's it's they know they know what they're doing. Yeah, everyone else knows what they're doing, and I'm getting a new Tenchu game, mate. That is like my favorite game as a kid, mixed with probably one of my favorite game series of the past 10 years like yeah. mm-hmm. you know one of the, the most i've thought about video games as an adult and like the biggest thrill like killing ludwig in bloodborne yeah was like oh, amazing 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 i don't know why that one always sticks to me i think it's because of that weird bit when he starts going a bit sick and he has the great sword and then he starts talking probably the most intimidating boss battle i think it's literally of, yeah 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 he's, such, he's so he's such a horrible monster to look at and yeah. he screeches and screams he's literally really a aggressive screeching horse yeah, yeah. Blob. but then he becomes like this like big figure and he starts talking and you know that bit when you're speaking to his decapitated head and he starts saying it like there was that little sliver of moonlight and he, he just he went a bit further something so poetic about it and it's like that is everything I like about the game Yeah, like gaming now as an adult and it yeah. gets me excited and that's the important thing I feel excited about video games when I talk about Dark Souls and Bloodborne Mixed with fucking nostalgia. ninjas. Yeah, yeah I, come on. Yeah, <laughs> Ninja nostalgia. On, honestly, this has the potential to be top five ever made, ever. Don't say shit like that. It does, though. I don't know what to expect, but all it needs to do is not be shit yeah. to be amazing because right. it's got a finesse there. Listen, I'm going to look at Liam for a little bit and Liam's going to do some talking, all right? Go on. Okay. Liam, um, yes. do, you have any, <laughs> do you have any opinions about Sekiro Shadow Stag Twice? What are you going to do? What platform are you going to play it on? Uh, I'm getting it on PS4 just because, I don't know why, it just seems like yeah. the right place for this sort of game, yeah. weirdly enough. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've just because tried... it's Japanese. It is Japanese. And I don't know why. Well, well no, they're, they're, like, like Jake's doing a face. Yeah, yeah, but wasn't there wasn't there a Microsoft thing? Where's all the Japanese games, isn't it? Yeah, like, oh, all right, we're but trying to. It was it. announced at the Microsoft conference, wasn't it? At E3. Yeah, I don't know. yeah I think so. the, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but yeah, I'm looking forward to Sekiro. I'm trying to go in knowing as little as possible as I can. Yeah, same. Absolutely. I want to go in. I want it all to be first time. I've seen a few yeah. of the impressions videos. I've seen the first like reveal trailer. Yeah. I've not watched anything else apart from them. And that, yeah, I want to go in. I want it all to be fresh. I want to be surprised. Yep. I want to discover everything myself. Yeah. I want it all to be like a 
a fresh experience. Like no, I'm ex- not looking at Wikipedia. I'm not looking exactly, at any. Yeah. It won't uh, exist. That's a beauty. Well, no, not it's Wikipedia. Not, so like Wiki guides yeah. or factual. It won't exist. Yeah. I know. As you soon know as I go on like mm. Reddit on the day it's out, whatever, every thread is going to be like, I found this. Yeah. I found mm. this. Go here, do that. So I'm going to try and avoid all yeah. that. I just want to experience it all for myself. Yeah, very much. I'm with mm-hmm. you there, totally. I've, like, so I've been trying to avoid the trailers, and I've seen that one, uh, which yeah. which was all right. It was like sort of a mood setting one. I didn't feel like it spoiled too much of anything, and I've seen um, gameplay from so a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? We did we did a lot of talking about Sekiro we did, on uh, this year podcast, yeah. and, I, and I'd watched a few previews, but it was all the same. Yes. Uh, slice of the game, yeah. and it was you know I don't feel like I was spoiled at anything major like mm-hmm. so, um, so I, I'm feeling pretty cold going in, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, yeah. Like I don't want to I don't want to be prepped uh, going into this at all. So, mm-hmm. um, that's coming out on Friday, boys. That's, uh, I think this is the perfect game for Friday because it's like you're saying like Marvel movie lockdown mode. Yeah, Stay yeah. off the internet. Uh, I'm happy to assume here that there won't be a extra life wiki for fucking day one Sekiro that's a beautiful thing yeah, everyone you're not, will be playing it. Yeah, exactly <laughs> everyone's going to be ex, you know filling it in as you go mm. so if you are into that like wiki entries you, mm. you know you can get your money's worth of. but it's a perfect game to you know if you work a Monday to Friday perfect yeah. game to have over the weekend and just yeah, put your head totally. down and just explore and fa- you know like old school days in it get lost yeah. in it without the internet that'd yeah. be nice mm-hmm. totally that, I'm, so I'm definitely with you there Liam I'm looking forward yeah. to that sort of uh, that point of view. We've also got Unravel 2, which is already out, but it's coming to the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the same day. So if you want to yeah. got some light, uh, friendly, yarn based oh, platforming. Right. There is another Switch game coming out this week that I might get. Go on. Final Fantasy Mystery Dungeon Chocobo. Damn, I just slipped I my list somehow. I might get it because the Chocobo games are fun, but it's like a dungeon crawler where you play as a Chocobo. You have Final Fantasy monsters. What does the Chocobo do in terms of attacking? Kicking well, and pecking. Peck, ca- yeah. yeah, wing attacks. Cast off some wing attacks. Kicking. Come pecking. on, man. What else do you need? <laughs> you never attack by a bird. <laughs> Chocobo that, defense squad over here. I really the, like the way you said kicking and pecking there. It was like quite a nice uh, little that's ring on to the, that. the 20th of March, and it's on PS4 and Switch. They should have picked that up. They should have fucking called it Final Fantasy kicking and pecking. Man, I would have bought that one. Uh, that would have been on the list. <laughs> Kicking and yeah. pecking with the chocobos. They don't have a big audience, but I like the chocobo games. Right, we're going. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to Sekiro, so you should 100% expect some big Sekiro chat yeah. next yes. week. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably in a podcast. Yeah, um, we've got, yeah. if you missed it, by the way, we launched our first bonus podcast for our patrons. So if you are a patron, um, mm-hmm. then check it out. It doesn't matter if you're on a dollar a month or above. doesn't matter what rating. That's for everyone. It's just a little way that we're going to be saying thank you so everyone supports us on Patreon from now on um, because it's a, it's a good way for us to consistently put out some bonus stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all going to be like off, if you're still in a way, it's like off topic stuff. It's not not games necessarily. And if it is games, it's going to basically be stuff that we've already talked about, but just like elaborating a bit more or, you know, what our thoughts are a week on yeah. and stuff. So it's not, we're not going to be putting like what we'd expect to put on the YouTube channel on there, but it's it's just like movies and, and shit like that. Um, yeah. Basically whatever we want to talk about. So mm-hmm. that's a bonus podcast to a month. If you're a patron from $1, $1 and above, there should be a, mm. It's going to be a new one this, next week, isn't it? Let's record one right now, actually. Yeah, we're recording this. one after this, and Let's then we're coffee. planning and then, to put uh, it out the end of this week. So, yeah. so if you're podcast a patron, 30, you'll have two to so watch. Don't miss it if you're a patron, because we've recorded it for you. And if you're See not, you and time. you're interested, then there's that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. I think there's like a on it.